Yeah. <laughs> now praise God. So I think let's pray first before we go. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you, Lord, with an open mind, Father. Open our hearts to receive your word, Lord, and change us inside out. Whatever words I may say today, Lord, it's uh, about God-like thoughts, thinking God-like thoughts for a godly life, Father. Help us, Father, to control our thoughts and help us to seek and set our minds on the things above, not on this earth, Lord. May each one of us abide, Lord, in your word, and may your Holy Spirit be with us right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Yeah, and you can take your notes. And where's my note? I just hold it. Okay. My title, the message today is Godlike Thoughts for a Godly Life. Amen. This is uh, really a very good. Uh, my, my, the Lord God just told me about how to control and overcome our thoughts. When you take a look at your notes, everything is here actually. It's already laid down. All you have to do is read it. You can take this home and review it again. But I'm just going to expound everything here. So the first, uh, the first thing we should do is set your minds on the things above. I'll, I'll explain that again later on. But do you know that our mind is the control tower of our life? Mind here. It's here, right? This is whatever happens in our life, it starts here, right? All our decisions are there. And the truth is, whatever you are today is the result of what you have been thinking all those years. You and I, including me. I, was, I shared uh, at the park yesterday that 55 years ago, 8 and 10 years old, that was, you know, as a children, uh, elementary, we always uh, think about what we want to be. When on when we will order and the teacher, oh, what do you want to be when you you know grow big something? The only the one thing that I can think of is, Lord, I want to be someday probably in a foreign land aside from the. I grew up in the Philippines. Yeah, I think I want to go somewhere aside from the Philippines. So, and uh, that that consummated you know with the grace of God, the, the blessings of God. When I was after my college days, I was in a band. I was able to go to Japan. That was my first place of, you know, being away from the Philippines. And the second was, I thought to myself, hey, this Japan thing is, it's kind of like just to fulfill my being a musician, first, first trip is good enough for me. My other band members, they, I think they, some of them uh, had a five, seven trips. But me once ago, I told myself, Lord God, uh, with you guys, I'd like to go to America. To make things short, here I am. With God's blessing, married after college. After, actually, after I came from Japan, I, I, I met my wife, and I was blessed with my business in the Philippines, being the manager. That literally, I was transferred to open up the business in California. And with God's blessing, again, during my single days, I was already uh, pondering the Bible left and right. Of course, life is not easy. Eh? We astray once in a while, but with my uh, i was thankful to my parents being able to bring us a protestant uh, church that sunday is a must you know buy, put god first in your life so now i was i'm here i'm blessed i don't even realize that god's blessing i'm here sharing the word with you right now it's a blessing right amen it's a blessing <laughs> so let's go with the with the word our um um, message now and the first um, scripture I put in the Bible is let's uh, talk about the wisest man in the Bible Solomon the son of David my first scripture this is is a purism. as the man thinks in his heart so is he you see that that's my first bullet there yeah, that I put in we are actually what we think do you think do you, do you believe that we are what we think we are the author of our life, right? We, are, we write our own story life. Whatever we think, there's only two things that you can think what's going to come from. It's either from God or the father of the lies. He deceives us once in a while. So better, we better take care of our mindset. So we are the master of our own soul. There's a saying also that we are the captain of our own ship, right? You make your own bed and you lie in it, right? That's what's going to happen in your life. If you think wrong, 
something's gonna happen wrong so my uh, my filipino uncle used to tell me in the philippines your your coconut shell yeah your mind and your brain over here right in your head they say use your coconut shell <laughs> well uh, i'd like to uh, let you uh, tell the story about job job you know the story of job right his life's uh, story what was the one thing that caused job to keep his integrity aside from being so faithful that he didn't never give up on god what do you think he touched out. Oh, the devil touched his uh, body. The, 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 the devil even got to his wife. Touched his children. They all killed. Possessions. Everything. That gun. He boiled in his body. And what do you think? You know? He exemplified the greatest faith to God. You know? When he was tempted and tested by Satan. Several times with God's approval. You know what? Over here. He never lost his mind. Can you attest to that? That's Job's story. He never lost mind. His faith was clearly God. So that's taking care of your mind. He never lost his mind. So let's move on. Okay. Now, so if you don't think, uh, if you don't like what's going on in your life right now, say maybe you ask yourself the question, what am I thinking about? What do I think about myself? What do I think about other people? You know, because of what we th what we think about is really what controls us, right? For example, what's your relationship with God right now? What's your relationship to each other? Your if you're married, your wife, if your children, what's your connection with them? What's your sense of direction in life right now? Whatever we accomplish, we have to consider that even our failures in life. All of that is a result of the way we think. Can you agree with me on that? And oftentimes we forget that this is the control tower here. You think, then action, then your heart. What with God's uh, grace, if you are with God, you'll be okay. And we cannot control everybody, you know. And control all the circumstances that goes beyond us. Because, the, again, the devil is devouring. He's going to see the weaknesses in your heart, you know. And he will hit you there. And so when I think about it, this affects us. And I think about how many people also are there who are, you know, going uh, good in their life. They breeze out. Because you know what? They think right. They don't think wrong. Right? So what you have to ask is this. Let me ask you. What is it that determines what I think? Is it the word of God? Or it's something else that I read, something else that I watched, or think about many people sit down and open their mind. Yeah, for you and me, we watch television uh, at home. You know what, the television program or the news, whatever we see there, not, we don't realize that we're sitting there, we're being programmed, you know in their mind to think of a certain way do you believe me in that that we are programmed the media has a lot of stuff out there but you say you you might say okay well does that include preaching too of course it does and listen to this because i want you to be programmed right now to think the way god thinks programmed to understand the word of god amen Program is just the way that you live in a fashion that's pleasing and honorable to God. Amen? Yep. Okay. Again, if you... Uh, uh, God has promises. Uh, in fact, I have the book of promises here. If you really stay in God's uh, uh, you know, um, area of your life, you will be fine. And, but if you're watching some, again, program that's full of unwholesome thoughts... Sensuality, something, oh, plenty in the TV right now. Crime, you know, and all this unwholesome, yeah, movies. We can even find good movies right now. They say, oh, th there's a comedy going on, but it's toilet comedy movie. It's, it's really crazy. My wife and me experienced one time, we watched a comedy movie and it just went step out. By 10 minutes, God, this is not right. And started a movie, all the cussing, the FB and the S, you know. It's, it's hard to find a movie right now. And I can tell you, most of them are pure junk, you know. <laughs> you don't need that in your mind, right? 
you, know, you don't need it in your uh, thought of life and certainly it should not be part of your life anymore. Right now there's movies that showing on Christian movies. Um, have you guys seen Reason? That's quite a mood movie, yeah? And then I saw a young messiah. It's Hollywood, though. Uh, the Christian movies is, are good, but still there's 20, 30, or even 50% Hollywood style. It's okay. Better than the worldly thing. You know what I mean? Better than the worldly things. There's miracle from heaven. It's going on right now. And my brothers just saw, I miss it. God's uh, Not Dead Part 2 is so showing on right now in the movies. So we can, we can watch that. I think it's a good movie. Millie and Gary and Nelton went to see that. So what I want to talk today is how to control our thoughts. So you can open uh, your notes here. We can, if you have the Bible, we can open up uh, Colossians 3, 1 to 10. And let's see what Paul is saying. I'm just going to read it to you. Here it goes. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is our life is revealed, that is when he comes, you know. Then you also will be revealed, come with him in glory. Therefore, watch this, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed which amount to idolatry. For it is, it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. If you're disobedient with the word of God, of course, he's going to get you and punish you or something. And in them, you also once walk when you were living in them. But now you also put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, and abusive speech from your mouth. And then the ninth one, do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. This verse 1 to 10, oh, so powerful. Everything is like one package still. You read this and it's going to tell the story of your life how to be a new man, you know, put on a new self. Because my bottom verse, especially 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are in a new creation if you are with Christ. Amen? So, now, how do I control this control tower of my life? One of the ways you overcome whatever sin you have or whatever, anything, you know, what is going on in your life, one of, one of the ways you overcome this is by asking yourself some very impacting questions. Not just questions, but questions that will make a difference in your life. Amen? And I would suggest it's on your notes, clearly stated here. There's eight here. The first one is, where will these thoughts lead me? Very, very convicting question, yeah? When you think, oh, wait, wait, what kind of thought is that? Comes from God or the Father of Lies? So, where will these thoughts lead me? Will, where, where will this lead me if I keep thinking the same thing over and over again? Well, it's going to lead you somewhere. I just hope that it's the Word of God that you were thinking. Amen? The second question, will these thoughts get me where I want to go? Then you have to decide, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go in life from here on? And I hope that if you're a believer, you'll be okay because you're going to live a life that's godly. Amen? You're going to live a life that's godly. So if I want to go, if you say, I'm not just important, you know, I'm a nobody. I have no gifts. I have no skills. I have no talents. You give yourself a lot of excuses you won't go anywhere. Would you believe that? You won't go anywhere. If you have all these questions, if you, have the, you know, you, you have to ask yourself, if I keep thinking that, you won't go anywhere. So let's go to the, uh, the third question. I love this. Are these thoughts scripturally acceptable? In other words, say for example, you're sitting in, again in the front of a TV and something comes along, you know, it's not right. The media again made that. Even the commercials now are so very very tricky they they get you you know uh, your attention go oh, buy 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 but all this sensual thing oh my goodness i've seen a lot of that i'll just it's really crazy out there the media deluded the truth and they all, they put all kinds of stuff out there and people to watch and ask yourself question are these thoughts scripturally acceptable yeah 
you see somebody you know committing sexual acts on the television oh my goodness that is crazy yeah are these things really accept are acceptable scripturally no they're not then you have to shut it down you cut it off in other words you don't have to watch what you you know is not right amen you shut it down and somebody says again oh i'm so weak you know what you're weak because you're talking about being weak you know if you have the spirit of god it will enable you to do whatever is necessary to overcome whatever is, uh, there is right if you have the spirit of god you will really battle that you will resist the devil you know and resist the temptation so what you uh, when you're weak what you are doing is really giving yourself the question let's look at reality What's reality? Reality is the first three questions that I just uh, told you. Where will, this, where will these thoughts lead me? You have to answer that. Where will this thought, uh, where will this thought get me where I want to go? Yeah? Are these thoughts scripturally acceptable? That will lead us to the fourth question. Will these thoughts build me up or tear me down? They're going to do one of the, other, of the two, right? they're not neutral it's like, like the magnet positive negative it's just like uh, when god uh, when matthew says it's either a yes or a no right you got to be on the yes side that's the better part of it our thoughts are gonna build us up or tear us down when you sit through this message i'm i'm, I'm telling you now of course you can uh, you can be uh, you're, you're spiritually you know be build up with this message i'm doing because it's all for god's purpose not mine not ours not the world right when you look and listen to the stuff that you know it's not right ungodly unscriptural sensual or whatever it might be you know the real truth they're gonna tear you down spiritually amen they're gonna tear you down so you have to decide whether you're gonna watch stop look listen to your heart i'm gonna sing you the song it's stylistic stop look listen to your heart hear what it's saying it's all about love yeah but you have to listen be careful because this is really very 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 important you can listen to your friends whatever they're saying they might you know help you and impact your life but i don't suggest that especially if your friends are not godly which get, uh, goes to the next uh, you know, question I'm going to ask you. Could I share these thoughts with someone else? Whatever you, you, you're thinking, could you share, share it with somebody else? Of course you, you can. Why not? But uh, I'm not saying you could tell anybody everything you know in life about yourself or what it might be. There's always a privacy thing sometimes. But you know, the best thing you can talk with your thoughts and whatever is going up is if you're married, your wife. And if both of you are, uh, uh, you know, in, with, in God's line, then we can prayerfully do it, the things that you're thinking. Especially our wives, they're like uh, Pastor Ben was telling me, uh, was preaching like, our wives are, why are wives wiser than us? <laughs> Women are, <laughs> I, I can attest to that too, yeah? Sometimes I just go, ah, I'm everywhere. But when my wife says, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I, I think it's a given you know uh, our mind is uh, uh, you know differently why right the venus and mars <laughs> if you if you see that uh, you know that guy about venus and mars so but anyways well uh, uh, that's just that's just about it so if you if you um uh, talk uh, yeah you know share your thoughts you share it with a godly person or your godly wife Amen. And the next question here. Where did these thoughts originate? You know? Again, you know where the, the thought originated. Two, two of the things only. Left or right. You know? The good and the bad. Or some thoughts did not, you know, something did not originate from God, you know? They do not originate in heaven. They did not originate in godly living. They did not originate in anything that's holy. We just sang the song holiness, you know? I like that, you know, uh, take my heart and transform it take my mind you know and transform it and form it. oh i love that so they did not originate in something that is good for you so when you analyze these thoughts 
where this come from you might you might you must decide right away and what's the source of this what is it what is this gonna do in my life listen to this all of these questions you have the right and the power to answer for your life nobody can answer them for you amen with the grace of God and your devotion to God you'll be able to know the truth to these thoughts and I'll set you free amen it's gonna set you free S number seven questions now do I feel guilty thinking these thoughts well you know the answer to those things do I feel guilty you know for example if you thought about taking something that didn't belong to you how would you think about it Ooh, you should feel guilty because if you're not you have a major problem then you'll think a little deeper have I been saved yeah that's a good question oh, of, of what's going in my life so we said your thought life is in your mind this is the control tower of your life right and because it is we make the decisions and we suffer the consequences if we made the wrong decision about all or, or else we can glean or enjoy the blessings of making right decisions in life is that an amen, amen. we can enjoy that yeah whether it's about money or it's about if you're married whether it's about friendship or just relationship here's with where it all it's all start here and this is going to control your life and the truth is all of us to this point in our life where we are is a result of how we've been thinking all these years and you see uh, you can take your mind you cannot take your mind out and put somebody else in there you know except jesus christ our lord if you put him he says we have the mind of christ that when you trusted jesus as your personal savior he gave us the power to think the way he thinks that doesn't mean we'll be as wise as he is all that we have is all the knowledge that he has you know but he gives us the right to the, the right and the power to think godly as his creation yeah you have the gift of almighty god and someone to protect us in the process of walking our walk with christ amen so first second corinthians 2 16 look at this how can i have the mind of christ we have the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ means sharing the plan, purpose, and perspective of Christ. And it is something that all believers, only believers can possess this. Having the mind of Christ means we understand God's plan in the world to bring glory to himself and to provide salvation for sinners like us. Yeah? If we repent, then we can be saved. You know, it means we identify with Christ's purpose to seek and to save that was lost. That's Luke nineteen ten. It means we share uh, Jesus' perspective of humility and obedience. Philippians two five and eight. It means uh, we share Jesus' perspective of compassion. Remember when, when in the Sermon on the Mount, when uh, Jesus saw the multitude, he moved with compassion. That's Matthew nine thirty six. If you read that, and then. We share Jesus' perspective of being uh, having a prayerful dependence on God. Luke five sixteen. He often withdrawn to the wilderness a lot of times. You know, he find a, a nice place, a solitude, a solitude place to pray early in the morning. Or well, we're all trying to do that. I know. So a lot of us here are doing our devotions. I'm trying my best on a daily basis. Having the mind of Christ involves wisdom from God. It was it was once hidden in second first Corinthians two seven says, but now it's revealed to each one of us. The mind of Christ is given to believers through the Spirit of God. That's first Corinthians ten to twelve. You know, the Spirit of God searches all things. Yes, the deepest things of God. Amen. The mind of Christ cannot be understood by those without the Spirit. That's so sad. The natural man doesn't have that. They don't have the Spirit of God so you have to have uh, faith you have, you have to be saved first before you have the mind of Christ the mind of Christ gives believers discernment that's us as believers on spiritual matters Again, here it is in order to have the mind of Christ one must first have saving faith in Christ 
Amen? John 1, 12, and John, if you can check that. After salvation, after you, you accept the Lord as your Savior, then the believer lives a life under God's influence. That's us now. The Holy Spirit indwells and enlightens the believer, infusing him with his wisdom. That's the mind of Christ. That's why we gotta really take care of a mindset here. It, it starts here, the control tower. The believer bears a responsibility to yield to the Spirit's leading, Ephesians 4.30, and allow the Spirit to transform us and renew our mind. Amen? And we're going to have God uh, thinking, God-like thoughts, that's the mind of Christ, leads us to a godly life. Okay, the last one, the number eight question. Do these thoughts fit who I am as a follower of Christ, of Jesus Christ? Do these thoughts fit who I am as a follower of Jesus? If you're not a follower of Jesus, anything goes in your life. It's sad. You'll be everywhere. But once you trust Jesus as Savior, there's some thoughts that don't fit you, you know. There's some thoughts that doesn't fit you anymore, you know. You know what I mean? They just don't fit you. Once you trust the Lord Jesus, the Lord of your life, they don't fit you any longer. And so you, you make choices all the time. Is this Lord? Okay. The Lord is in your back. Oh, Omar, don't do that. That's not, that doesn't fit you anymore. You know? And basing on, uh, our choices will be basing or, on ourselves who, who we want to be. A follower of Jesus Christ. And therefore, there's some things that don't, you know, you don't go to places you don't used to go. There's some words that don't fit you anymore. Like the MB, you know, the BS thing, the uh, 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 taking God's name in vain. Don't do that, you know. When you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that's not you anymore. There's, there's something that your, your actions, your attitudes, your habits don't fit you. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? Once we trust Christ as our Savior. And take a look at the verse here. In, the, in your notes. The next verse. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Come out among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. That's very important. When you're a follower, you got to have this verse in your mind, in your, stuck in your mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to think different already. And if I'm going to think differently, I'm going to act differently. I'm going to look differently like this. Yeah, always smiling. Yeah, always shining your light out there, right? If I'm following instead of Jesus, yeah, I'm following Jesus instead of the world, yeah? Because if I'm going to live a godly life, and I'm going to make my mind the control tower that I want to be, I have to be, this is very important, obedient to God's word. That's the most important thing. Submitting, I always do that. Surrendering, and the last one is obedient to God's word. There's so many prophets in the Bible, every one of them obedient to God. Even way back to, you know, Joseph and all. They all, they all went well. They're all being, uh, you know, vindicted and, you know, they're, they're all convicted, you know, prophets everywhere there. So when we talk about what we, he says in a few minutes, okay, we'll, we'll just uh, look at uh, the verse again. I'm going to go back to the eight, uh, ten verses. Let's look back at the first verse. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, he says, keep seeking continuously and habitually do it that is keep seeking it's gonna be a new life for you if you keep doing it not just once but it's, it should be a lifestyle you read the word of God habitually and do it continually keeping the word of God before you it's gonna be a part of your life now amen and he, he says speaking of those things about what is he talking about He's talking about, for example, when he says, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Seeking things above doesn't mean that I don't have to do anything anymore about relationship with other people. No. And then I get holy and holier. No, that's not the way it works. And I don't think any, about anything, yeah? It means that I've set my mind on things that are pleasing to the Father. Keep seeking those things above. Amen? That is what Jesus uh, uh, taught. So if I want to keep seeking things above, I'm going to find what he said. Of course. You got to read the Bible and how he lived. And how he said, I'm, I'm to live. I'm going to do it habitually. No matter what, 
be careful here. No matter what, who you are, the devil will see to it that you don't remember much. That's why if you don't read the scriptures continually, uh, sometimes we go astray. Yeah? Here's what he's saying. Make the most in your thinking. Make a big part of your thinking what God thinks. Amen? Keep thinking of those things above where Christ sits at the uh, Father's right hand. And what kind of thinking is that, you might ask? Jesus is always thinking us personally, you know. He's concerned about our life. He's thinking what's best for you and me. What's best for you this morning when we go home? Uh, hearing this word, I hope you're fed with the word of God and you're going home so peaceful, joyful, and you know, you connect with your uh, loved ones, whoever you meet later on. So he, God is always thinking for the best of us. Whether best for spending our money, <laughs> what's really everything. He's thinking about everything for us in his uh, realm. You know, he said, keep seeking those things at the throne of God. Amen. Okay, now the next one here. As believer, follower of Jesus, we died our old way of life. And so we should be, you know, thinking God's thought. What does he think? How does he want us to think? How does he want us to live? And in the process of doing so, remember this. When you're thinking his thoughts, you're thinking the most powerful thoughts there are. When you're thinking his thoughts, you're thinking and beginning to see what he's thinking about you. And when you focus on what God thinks about you, that he loves you, you know. Yeah? First uh, John 4, 9. We love him because he first loved us, right? That he's forgiven you, that he cares for you, that he wants the best for you. Then things begin to happen in your life and that's why he says seek him habitually and continually amen, amen. he set your mind okay, here on the things above not on the things of this earth you gotta set your mind on something set it on the things above that's the verse two things that are holy again with sound holiness righteous and godly Verse 3 here, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That is, you died your old way of life. Amen? That uh, when, you, when you were saved, you died. When you say, I'm trusting God as my Savior, you just didn't say, well, I just want to add Jesus to my present life and I'll keep going what I'm doing before. No, you cannot do that. This is what people do when they're living in areas of idolatry, you know. Yeah? They have all kinds of idols in their house, right? Might be money, possessions, everything. Idol, idolize. It's either you, you cannot uh, um, you cannot serve money, brother, and uh, you know only one. Yeah, you have to serve God. You cannot idol. And unless you, and unless they fully understand those people who don't know God, when you explain to them who Jesus is, they say, "Oh yes, I got a God for this. They got idol to this God, you know." You know what I mean? And they want to do uh, just an, a place where Jesus to add their, to their religion. No! Uh, this is my thing. I can, not, I can uh, do all things through money instead of Christ. That's the people who are in adult, adultery. I can do all things through money instead of Christ. That's wrong, right? It should be the other way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So these are the adulterous people, you know. And when Christ who is in your life is revealed, this is for now. When he comes and then he, then also you will be revealed with him in glory. That's verse 4. Now the next verse, what's this? Therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to these thoughts. Dead to immorality, dead to impurity, dead to passion, strong, insatiable, evil desire, greed. You got to put them to death. Amen? Will you say what that does mean? For example, I'm just giving an example. You, you want to have, you want to earn so much money, you want to save so much money because you, you've seen something you like. Yeah? You got to have it. You got to have it. Maybe a car, or jewelry, or whatever. A new computer <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. You wrestle with it. Or else you, you actually, you can put it to death, you know. 
You can control your mind. Oh, you know, I'll buy that when everything is, uh, you know, okay and I have enough to buy for it, you know. Don't push it, you know, because if you have the Holy Spirit, you know, you can do, you can put a stop on it. Amen? Set your minds on the things of God. Keep them habitually before you. So when Satan attacks you, you have an ammunition, right? You have an ammunition. You can say, thank you, Jesus, that you've given me the strength to say no to sin and to obey you. Yeah? Now watch this. If you say it, well, I got to think about it. That's another bobo. Well, Satan loves that. What happens when you say, I got to think about it? Where you, well, what are you thinking? The other side around. Back here. Satan is also working here in your mind, right? Here is the battlefield in your mind. It's right here. So you decide your victory or your defeat in your mind. But you know what? Victory is won in your mind. Amen? When you're with God, it's all here. You're still going to win if you have Christ in you. Sometimes your feet and your hands trouble where your mind has already gone. And you attest to that? You set your mind on somebody or something or someplace or you set your mind on that and you keep thinking about that. The next thing you know, your mind is not there. But your feet is already there. You know what I mean? Your feet are going to trouble where you set your mind. And so therefore, we have to guard our mind and thoughts, what we think. Amen? We have to guard it. Then yeah, look at five now. Consider, again, the members of the body dead to all of these things. And so he says, these things we once walked in. But remember, we died to that. So you forget about that. And there's thing in life and there's time in our life when you and I need to be just as dead. Stop it, you know. You have a new creation. Stop it. That we see, you know, things that we've seen, we've heard. Remember this, Satan will bring back what you've heard, you know. See, uh, what you've seen, what you've felt, what you've touched, experienced, you name it. And so what we do next, just really put that to death. Stop it. Yeah? Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't fit who I am. So we say no. And say no. Again, somebody says, I am weak. We got to minister to that guy who's always saying, we have to, that's why we have to evangelize. Look for these people who are so weak that they have not strong, you know. Yeah, we are weak. Yes, he said. When you say I'm weak, you just have to set it up. You set it up yourself with the devil again. I am weak. You know what? Satan says right here. Say it again. Say it again. I am weak. Right? If you give in, say it again. And oh man, he's going to be happy to, <laughs> to hear that. You, know. you choose to think at that moment that you have the power of God within you to make a wise decision. Amen? <laughs> you got to make a wise decision. Then when he says, for example, watch this. And I, I just love this. Um, Vincent, can you put this uh, Colossians 3.16, please? This, I like this. The word, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So when you're in trouble, I me mean, as a musician, I can encourage, I can suggest to you, sing, sing some hymns, yeah? To battle the, you know, the enemy. This ammunition that you can sing along with God. I praise God, and a lot of people, we always shout, praise the Lord! And that's a good thing to do. When you are we are in trouble, yeah. The word of God filling our mind, our heart. We have this awesome resource. Amen. We have this awesome resource. So, okay. When you can, uh, when you, when you, uh, when you have an overflowing uh, resource of God in your heart, oh, it's beautiful. When you, when you have the word of truth overflowing on you, you come against anything, no matter what it might be. Yeah, you can do that. You'll have the sense of the strength and the power of God to help you in that situation, no matter what it is. But if you just read the Bible once in a while, well, it's okay. I would really suggest a daily devotion is really very important if you can do that. Try. It's just a, a practice and, a, you know, it's just a choice in your life that I think that's the best thing to do. Just ponder the Bible. Uh, 
so many things to do that the physical Bible, your telephone has you know application for Bible, you version. There's so much in the, in the telephone, smartphones now. You can just really uh, do that as your lifestyle. Okay, so we begin by saying your mind is a control tower. So you have to decide how you're going to live your life, what you're going to say, what you're going to read, what you're going to look at. So look at the verse, the next verse I'm going to uh, show you, Psalm 119. Let's take a look at what David says in the book of Psalm. How can we be pure in our heart? Yeah, look, how can a young man keep his way pure? You know what? By keeping it according to your word. See, there you go. Bible reading, getting to know Christ daily. Yeah? And it, it's verse, this is the verse that tells us to be pure and holy. And it says, how can you be really pure? Just keeping the word every day in your life. How can you keep, uh, continue to keep your way pure? Look at the next verse I put in. in. Your word have I treasured in my heart that I might not sin against God. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I'm going to sin against God. Treasured, not, not just drop it. Treasured abundantly overflowing, overflowing in your heart, the living word of God. Because uh, what that means is, up in the control tower here in our head, in our mind, is the truth. And the control tower is the right sense of direction. And the control tower, you're evaluating things as they are, not as they appear to be. In the control tower, what you're thinking, are there consequences to sin? You ask sometimes, yeah? Of course. Whatever I do, to be, I re I do today, I'm going to reap tomorrow. In other words, you're going to be thinking right, super abundantly. He says extravagantly. If there's some particular area of your life in which you were having a problem, ask yourself those questions I gave you earlier. Where did it come from? Did it come from this extravagantly awesome word of God in my mind or in my heart? You know, I'll tell you, if it doesn't fit you, it doesn't fit you anymore. Remember this, you decide you, who you want to be. You decide what you want to accomplish here in this life on earth. You decide how do you want to live all right here. You decide whether you want to be accepted or be rejected. You make a lot of decisions in, in your life all right here in your mind. Amen. And remember, right here is the battlefield also. The devil wants to pull you one way, but God is always there. He is always there for you. Satan has never done any good to you. Do you believe that? He's lied to you. He's deceived you and made you promises not a single one of them has ever come true. But you know the deception, he says, you'll enjoy this. But what he doesn't tell you is you'll enjoy only for a short time. And for a season, there's consequences. And you're going to really be, uh, you know, have that. There's cost. There's a payday someday. You have to decide there what kind of life you're going to live. What kind of future you're going to have. And it says if you're wise, you make right decisions. Right? You make right decisions. You'll ask those questions, all those eight questions I give you. And, you know, it's my prayer that you really make that right, wise decisions. Look at the last verse I, I'm sharing to you. 2 Corinthians 5.17. When, uh, when you have Christ as your Savior, if you are not, uh, the way I look at it here, all of us here are saved. So we don't have to encourage everyone here to, you know, accept Christ. We all believe in Christ here right now. Amen? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Having, that's having the mind of Christ, you know. That's thinking God-like thoughts for a godly life. Amen? And there's thoughts to ponder. Let's take a look at it. Thoughts to ponder. Ooh. I saw this. I'm Pastor Ben sh uh, also shared this a couple of weeks ago. We saw a thought and reap an action. We're going to respond to that. We saw an action and reap a habit because we keep sowing the same action, right? We'll form a habit. 
we saw a habit and reap a character because habits in our life determine our character, right? If we saw a character and we become something, we reap a destiny. This is who we are and this is our future with Christ. Our future, I can add uh, my, our favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future. And a future, you know, as if you're mature, mature with Christ, living a blessed life, you're going to have this supernatural relationship with God, and you are going to be okay. Amen? Amen. 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 So, let's pray. Our Father God, thank you, Lisa. That's the entirety of my message today. Having, um, being uh, able to think godly thoughts for a godly life. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, thank you, Lord, how grateful we are for your love for us. Thank you for really loving us first, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Father, for your forgiveness. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, enabling us, Lord. The mind of Christ strengthening us, overshadowing us, and guiding us, Father. And I pray for every person, Lord, who just heard this message, Lord, that they'll be uh, touched by the word, Lord. Especially, Father, those who never trusted you, but everyone, I believe, Lord, trusts you as who you are in our lives. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you continue to uh, give us all the promises that you always do. I pray for those, Lord, us, Lord, we are still in this world, and we might be tempted with the sins of this world sometimes, Lord. Please help us in that area, that uh, realizing that we don't have to live that kind of life, to be tempted, Lord. We want the best from you, Father God. And we uh, thank you, Father, for all this, uh, all the things that you've given us, Lord. You provide the needs that we have every day. Thank you, Lord, of your awesome power. Thank you again, Lord. Bless, uh, we bless you for loving us the way you do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen, brother. Praise God. All right. Praise God. What a powerful message. And hey, we need to hear messages like this because we realize sometimes our thoughts can get ahead of us. I mean, sometimes we think things that we're not even knowing what we're thinking and sometimes we're going, wow, how did that get in my mind? And we realize, yeah, truly, we gotta be careful and, and we know if it's not of God, we gotta be rid of it. You know, interesting, there's this one wise person, he said this statement and uh, it really makes a lot of sense. It's really simple, just, just hear this statement. It says, let the mind of the master be the master of your mind. Let me say it again. Let the mind of the master, who's the master? Jesus, right? Let his mind be the master of your mind. Wow, it's pretty simple, but it's profound. Realizing, you know, if we let him, our master, be the master of our mind, guess what? We're going to be thinking good thoughts, pleasant thoughts, thoughts that truly bring forth the presence of God. And, you know, Philippians 4 8, this is what it says. Just listen to this. Apostle Paul, he says, Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy, hey, think about such things. And we have to realize we got to be careful what we let into our noggins. <laughs> because if we just let anything go, we're going to be thinking like the world sooner than you think. And so we got to almost like put a block to the very things we know are not of God. Because, you know, God, he will help us. He will show us. He will speak to us. And he will let us know if these are the thoughts that could be destroying your life. Because it has to be of the truth. Like my brother said, got to make sure it's of the word of God. It's lining up with the word of God. Because think about this. A lot of times we know what is the truth. We know what is not of God. We know what is of God. Well, how is it that sometimes we let all these negative, these evil things enter in? Well, think about this for a second. Who do you think will find the truth faster, okay? The man who is lost, right, and won't ask for directions. Okay, come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about. If you're with your spouse, you know, with your wife or, or, or your girlfriend, whoever it may be, you know, sometimes, you know, we get lost. 
but your your mate will be saying come on go ask for directions already but we say no it's okay we've been lost only two hours we'll, we'll get our way i know where i'm going no worry and John Lee will attest to that, that that happened before, right? But not anymore, right? I, but we realize, yeah, you know, the fact is sometimes, you know, the women, on the other hand, will say, you know what? Let me go ask that guy right over there. Or let me ask that woman there, where can we go to find our destination? I mean, what is it uh, about the very fact that you know the women will do that and for us men right sometimes we say no no we just keep on waiting until we'll, we'll, we'll find our, our our destination sooner or later well we think about this what is the quality that separates the two travelers what is it it's humility isn't it and here's the thing I want you to understand in order to receive the truth and, and let it be just a, 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 a a fullness of how you think things we gotta receive the truth in humility because here's the thing the Holy Spirit will speak the word into your mind how it will travel to your heart will depend on how humble you are and a lot of times you know come on you know what I'm talking about the Holy Spirit may be saying something to you and go well that ain't for me well, I don't need to do that right now. And I have to tell you, a lot of times, I struggle with that. And the Lord will keep on speaking to me. Come on, Ben, you know what is right. You know what's according to my word. Will you do it? So if we really want to have the mind of Christ, we got to receive the word in total humility. And realizing, you know what, Lord, I don't know anything. But you know it all. And if I think like you, Lord, I know I'm going to have a blessed life. It's up to us. Are we going to think the very things of God? Because when it all has been said and done, right, we're going to be standing before the Lord. And the Bible says you're going to be held accountable for every word that you have, been, you have spoken while you were here on this earth. And we imagine the very fact we know our words originated from where? our thoughts right it started there and that's why we have to be careful of what we say and remember this it's not about having positive thinking my brother said it very plain and clear it's about having godly thinking because a person of the world say yeah think positive and the person say yeah okay I'm gonna think positive oh I'm gonna get through this because hey I'm all good uh, I'm almighty hey, I don't need God I, I'm gonna think positive that hey I'm gonna go wherever I want to go because I am that good well that's positive thinking according to the world godly thinking says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me without Christ I am nothing you see the difference it's about godly thinking and if we all have this kind of godly thinking we're gonna get so far in life because guess who's gonna be right there beside you to get you through whatever obstacle whatever difficulties may come Jesus is gonna be with you and God says I will never leave you I will never forsake you because you truly think the way I think that's what it's all about brothers and sisters do we have the mind of Christ if you do oh just watch out just see the miracles that will come forth in your life just watch the showers of blessings that will be poured forth because you truly are thinking like Jesus amen why don't we go and let's bow our heads let's bow our hearts let's come before our father God Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the message spoken through my brother Omar today. And truly, Lord, we desire to have the mind of Christ. And right now, with all our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, you may be saying, you know, Pastor Ben, I kind of realize that even though I say I'm a Christian, sometimes my thoughts can be pretty impure. Sometimes my thoughts can be thoughts that it's evil the thoughts that are bent on hurting others and right now you're saying father God please help me because I truly want to have the mind of Christ I don't want to let lust into my mind I don't want to let the very things of the world enter my mind that will someday 
destroy me. And right now you're saying, Lord, please help me truly to think thoughts that are of you. If this is a cry of your heart right now, you know as you raise your hand, Father God knows what's in your heart. And if you truly desire his help, he will come and help you. And you're going to realize you're empowered by the very Holy Spirit of God. And you know you're going to experience the victory because God is going to give you the victory as you trust in him. And if this is the cry of your heart, can you raise, it, raise up your hand right now and say, that's me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else say, that's me, Lord. Oh, I desire you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? All right, praise God. You can put your hands down. Let's pray. Father in heaven, will you help us, Lord? Because all of us here, we're in desperate need of your help. Because we want to be like Jesus. And we know the only way that that is possible is that your Holy Spirit's power must come upon us. Fill us, Lord. Overflowing, Lord, of your sweet, loving presence. Let there be such an outpouring of your Spirit's presence, Lord, that we know we're going to walk victoriously because Jesus Christ is alive in us. Father, we just want to give you all the praise, all the thanks, all the glory for what you started in our lives and what you will continue to do. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. And everyone says, Amen. Now for some of you may be saying, you know, Pastor Ben, I heard people talking about having a relationship with Father God, with His Son, Jesus Christ. What must I do? How do I get started in something like this? Well, simply put, you cry out to God right now. Cry from your heart. Cry from your soul. Say, Lord, I need you. I'm going to be leading a prayer uh, with you in just a minute here. And if you know your heart is being tugged, that's the Holy Spirit, simply put. He's tugging at your heart because he loves you. And he wants you to be welcomed into the family of God. But the only way you can do this is you got to accept Jesus into your life and into your heart. And if you're ready, you're saying, yes, Lord, I accept you. I want to make you Lord of my life. If this is the cry of your heart right now, can you raise your hand and say, that's me. Yes, I say yes to Jesus with my whole heart. Hallelujah. All right, you can put your hands down. Praise God. Won't you repeat this prayer after me? And remember, it's a crying out to God. And as you repeat these words, mean it, mean it, mean it from your heart. Say, Father God, oh, I need you. I give you praise for who you are. I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me on the cross. But on the third day, he rose again. And he lives in my heart. I give you praise for that. And Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner. But your word says, if I confess of my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh, cleanse me now, Lord. Make me holy and pure unto you. So now I say this, so you can hear me, Father God, so that everyone can hear me, so that I can hear myself, and so that the devil will know, Jesus Christ is my Lord. I live for him. I live for him only. Father God, I'll write my name in your book of life, for I give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen.